Hey everybody and welcome to Why It Works. Today we're talking about Pokemon. What about Pokemon? It's in the title. What's good about it? Pokemon is one of the most successful video game franchises in the world. I mean, who doesn't love Pokemon? Oh my. Oh. Ooh. I guess they probably got some bigger things to worry about. Than Jesus. That, no. Anyway, let's talk about why it's good. The show's called Why It Works. Whenever you start a new game, you get to pick your first Pokemon, but after that, it's up to you to assemble your winning team. There's hundreds of different species of Pokemon to choose from, so it's up to you to find the ones that suit you the best. So you're telling me I can have a full army of Wobbuffets? Precisely. Although you may come to regret that decision. Oh. At the start of the game, the professor is going to tell you to collect all of the Pokemon. And because you listen to your elders, you do. But along the way, the act of collecting becomes so enjoyable, as each Pokemon is different and has unique moves and properties. So, collecting becomes about finding the Pokemon that suit you the best, instead of just obsessive-compulsively completing a list. And with such a colorful cast of characters, it's no wonder that no two people seem to have the same favorite. Mine's Brock. God, I love Brock. The great thing about Pokemon is that there's a lot to do, but the player is free to go about discovering everything at their own pace. Basically, there's three main objectives. Collecting all eight gym badges and defeating the Elite Four, stopping Team Rocket, or whatever weirdos are trying to take over the world this week, and completing the game's storyline, and of course, collecting all the Pokemon. However, players are free to go about finishing these tasks as they see fit, so that they don't get overwhelmed. As you progress by beating gyms, you'll be able to teach your Pokemon new moves that are not only useful in battle, except for cut. But also grant you access to new areas, which means new Pokemon and new challengers. Like Brock. Man, those abs used hard in. See that right there? Nothing is more rewarding than watching your stupid, useless piece of shit magic card turn into a strong. Independent Gyarados. Exactly. And that's what I'm it's... gonna name him Gary. Exactly. And that's what's great about the evolution mechanic. Evolving a Pokemon not only improves their skills in battle, but creates a feeling of reward for using a Pokemon effectively. Their appearance may change in a novel way, but it creates a feeling of attachment and love for your small bundle of fish pixels. There's a trade-off to evolution though. Evolving a Pokemon will result in boosted stats, but preventing a Pokemon to evolve may allow better moves at an earlier level. I'm holding out hope my Magikarp learns Hyper Beam soon. There's not a prayer in the world that can help you with that. Another great mechanic is the catching mechanic. As we mentioned, you can catch any Pokemon that you see in the wild, and this includes the same types of Pokemon that you might see while battling enemies. Is that Jinx giving you sass? Catcher, put it to work. What about that Geo dude? Now he's smashing rocks for you. Imagine if in Mario you could just convince Goombas to run horizontally into Bowser for you. Wouldn't that be something? A final interesting idea is the typing mechanic. And we're not talking about any stinking keyboards. Screw you typing in the dead. This isn't your episode. Get your own! Every Pokemon has one if not two types assigned to it, and attacks have a type as well. Every type has different strengths and weaknesses against other types, which means you really need to strategize which types are on your team. So you don't have your whole team wiped out in one fell earthquake. Exactly. Uh, I want to talk more about Brock. I want to talk more about Brock. Let's talk more about Brock! I want to talk more about Brock! One of the most important aspects of the game's presentation is the music. The music in the towns are calming and relaxing, while the music in the explorer areas give you a sense of adventure. And battle music makes you want to punch your grandma. I don't know about that. I love my grandma. Regardless, the music does a very good job at setting the tone of your surroundings. Just like this killer rap. Huh? You too, tender fruit, air the dip, that's fine. Show the night, that's the from the poke. game. Bitch, you got our book, that's all, folks. Woo! <laughs> One thing that can't be overlooked is how the popularity of the Pokemon TV show and card game helped make Pokemon a household name. The show actually debuted in North America before the games did, and that was all it took to get kids hooked. Unlike so many other video game tie-ins, the Pokemon TV show, card game, and animated films are still produced to this day. Unbelievably, there's so many movies that in two years, they already had 2,000 of them. Yes. 
Regardless of how complex Pokemon games really are, they're still accessible to even the most inexperienced players. Whether you're playing competitively, or just want to see what the hell this pile of trash evolves into, it's fun either way. We're still playing these games 20 years later, because they're still fun. And that's why it works. Thank <laughs> you.